square timbers. A little timber mm. frame, that whole thing. Would be good. Um, but yeah. I double double trust on it. Further. Oh, cantilevered out. Cantilevered out past. Okay. So that you can set the sawmill in front of it. That's the board that you cut. Right. You can put them underneath and, and cantilever it out far enough. You can set the mill out in front of that. That would save me the room inside for, you know, shop space, tools, or whatever to get and stuff then, out of the weather. And then you can also move the, put, put a full length log underneath that. Yeah. And set it on your, on your mill where it's not going to be. So this is, this is Ben and Ben's a neighbor and he's got a great big farm. And when he's not uh, farming or running the sawmill, he's got a crane service. He's, uh, you have 15 businesses, 25? No, not quite that many. You got 100 businesses? <laughs> you sound like my wife now. <laughs> <laughs> so you do a little bit of a little bit of everything. I, I started out it, be, to be a farmer, and then my father-in-law was a contractor, and and he dedicated me to be to run his business while he it went off around the world building other buildings, commercial buildings, and so I became a contractor. So now, now I, I farm nights, and and I, I still dibble in the construction, but I'm getting old enough now that I can't handle all the the rigorous work of the, of the construction, so I bought a crane and I do a lot of just trusses now. When he slows down for half a second, I love to pick his brain. The, the objective is to, as you can see, I've got footings poured and I want to cut timbers and I need to bring in gravel and build a base and and then get that up. But I really like your idea of of on that, um, can't leave it out, leave, leave the saw out front. You, you might pour a flat floor to set it on, that's yep. the other thing, because you blow a lot of sawdust to, right. to the side and it's a lot easier to scoop off of the cement than it is off the gravel. Right. So pour your pad so that you're out far enough that not only can you walk while you're walking back and forth on the pad, but then you could sweep off all of that sawdust. Clean it up. That Cause, makes cause sense. It builds. I've, I have my mantle on a trailer and, and I just, it blows off the edge, but it still, it, it, it's amazing how much sawdust actually builds up, comes out of that chute right there. Yeah, we we did a little bit of cutting, and I, and I can you can see that it's it's it it really is. That's that's just a couple of trees, and it's it, it's going to build up quick, especially if we get serious and start running a lot of boards through here. So my thought is on these, I'm just going to drill like a, an 18 inch hole in there, and I'll put in a great big long piece of rebar, the heavy duty three quarter inch. You probably wouldn't have to go t too long if you put that number six three bar in there. Yeah. You just, d d even just a piece this much will hold it on, on the cement. So then that post will sit there. Mm -hmm. Now I've got 20 foot from there to here, and then I've got 12 feet to the next one. If it, if it were me, I would put, make this post 12 foot high. Okay. So I had room to, to bring other things in here that if I wanted to bring in and work on 12, it. 12 foot's tons. I mean, and, and then then you can bring the, the backhoe in, you can bring the the, the equipment, other equipment trucks, in, the truck or anything you, you wanted to bring back into here in. That'll give you that much height this way. Then I would, I'd, I'd kind of leave that over. So, so 20 foot, I'd, I'd go out here and make me another 10 feet. So that, that means that I've got to cut a 30 foot timber to go I take a cantilever from there to out to here. So unless you do it with trusses, unless, if you do it with trusses, then you won't have to. I, I really would like the look of the timber, and it, and all that means is that I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six timbers that I'd have to go down and have custom cut mm -hmm. at the sawmill. What size would you do if you're going to cantilever out that ten feet? The the trick is what what size logs can you find that you can saw? And that's the problem is I don't well I don't have the track. And I don't have the trees. I'd need a tree that big in order to get yes, a to get a good six by twelve timber or something that's going to sit up there. On top of that, so I just I think for a custom timber like that, I can do all the legs, but but the and I can do all the purlins between them. We, we could probably horse trade it because my my mill will cut those. Thirty. <laughs> I've got I've got thirty, but I have to cheat. I have to slide slide it back in the front so I, I cut it clear out to the 25 and then i slide I and mean, we like it just take big one your tracks down and add on the end of it and do it yeah so yeah i guess well, let's look at that because i there would only be 12 of them here or you could borrow as far as that goes there's only four bolts that takes them off we, you, we could come borrow my two extensions and and put on here end of here and, and, and have I, th it. I think that would be be excellent i just i don't know that i could find a tree that i could get that can't 
Well, but I so if, if we I, get too big, then we, we can't get it in the mail. <laughs> yeah. But if I but that's the other thing. If I just stay here and keep it in here, I could go 12 foot high, 20 foot wide, and I could mill everything. The, the challenge of that is you're going to have to either get, buy a, a beam to support out here. Yep. Or when you go to put logs on the mill, your posts are always in the road. Right. So I, I kind of have to value engineer that on my plans and see which which is going to be better. Do I cantilever, which I don't, I really would prefer a post out there, even if I have to do a, a, a beam. Because mm -hmm. I even if I could go a 24 foot opening, if you could do a 24 foot opening, you probably could tuck anything else in the, into that that you needed. Even if I had to, to, to monkey it jump, around. Uh -huh. I, I think that's better. When I think about the snow loads up here, a cantilever... Just hanging out there by itself. Hanging out there by steep. itself. I, yeah. Yeah. I feel warm, more warm and fuzzy if I had another couple of posts out there, even if I had a space, mm -hmm. and then tuck that sawmill back down in here. That might be wiser to, have to put, a, to put a, a beam out here in the, in the middle and bring a couple legs in and, and just be able to tuck it in. Yeah. Because the majority, of, like you say, the stuff you're, you're sawing is going to be 14 feet. Yeah. 14. A little bit 18 feet. Uh, 14 and under is, is the majority. Yeah. So that's probably better because then I can cut everything. I might have to get a couple of these that run all the way through, mm -hmm. but then the rest of it I could cut. The thing is, you're going to want to close it in, so you so you, you have the beams in here, but you you, you got to put the wood on the outside of that. Or, so that I was wall. just going to frame walls between the posts, and then just on the outside do a rough saw and board and bat, mm -hmm. board and batten on the outside, and and then fill up this inside with road base mm -hmm. and gravel. Um, because you'll need a place to stack boards that you can air dry. Yeah. And they can just sit, sit in here. I may close, you know, a section off for shop and tools or whatever, mm -hmm. a place to work out of the weather when it's raining. But but I think that's a great idea is just... I, I've discovered that I need a place to put mine all the time. When I saw boards, either I had to put them right up or, or else I had to find a hunt for a place to, to stack lumber. Right. That's out of the out of the sun and the weather. Well, and I I've been struggling with the same thing because I I brought the sawhorses up because the snow was so deep, mm -hmm. and and that's been great. Those are all dried out now, um, but I've got to get in here and I'm gonna I may have to just cut some timbers, some four by fours or something so I can set stuff on the ground mm -hmm. without it being down in the dirt. But I've got to I've got to work all this lumber, get it sorted and stacked, and 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 then I'll be ready to do some cutting. Great to have you out here. It's great to pick your brain. I'll probably want to get you back out as we start to get things cleaned up and and are working on putting this together. Because I'll, I'll need you for setting all of those beams. We'll just set them all with the crane. I may even just build the whole thing on the ground and then just, just have you it lift it up and then we'll set them right down. That's the easiest way to, to, to do it. I, I mean, I'd like to do a mortise and tenon and, and put it together and make it look really nice, even though it's going to be a ton of extra work. It has to be done on the ground. Then it's too hard to, to do that. To tighten them all up and to drill them and pin them. I think laying it out on the ground, getting it up on some blocks will make more sense it's to put this together. Easier, yep.